So, did you know that in Godot you can bind extra parameters to your functions super easily? With this technique, you can call a pre-existing function with additional info, or call the same function with different contexts, for example, to specialize a signal callback. Now, just before we dive in, have you ever wanted to get some professional feedback for your Godot projects? If you join my Patreon as a Square member, you'll get to ask me for personalized reviews once every two months. That's a full analysis of your project, with a detailed report and suggestions for improvement, all this for only 40 bucks. So if you're curious, be sure to have a look at the free article that explains it all, over here. So for the special case of signals, to do this in the editor, when you're in your signal connection pop-up, just toggle on the advanced options, and use the drop-down to pick the type of variable for your extra parameter, and finally set its value beneath. But more generally speaking, you can bind parameters to any function, not just signal callbacks, and in that case, you'll want to do this in your code. So to do that, you just have to call the bind method on your callback function, like this, or in c -sharp, use a lambda expression to set up the extra parameters. Oh, and by the way, in Godot, the result of the binding will be a new callable object, which means that you can totally store this bound version of your function in a variable, to reuse it later, you can use it with signals, but if you want to run it directly, then you'll need to use its call method. And also, here are some quick notes to keep in mind when using bind. First, the parameters that you bind to your callback will be baked into it. A bind is similar to what we call a closure in some other programming languages, and so this means that even if you bind a variable, and then change the value of this variable, your callback will still use the value the variable had at the time of binding. This is pretty obvious when binding for signals in the editor, since you're literally inputting the value by hand, but it's also the case when binding in code, so don't forget that point. Also, whatever parameter you bind will get added to the end of your input list in the callback function. Meaning that if you use bind with a built-in function, because let's say you want to add some fixed info to it, then this extra data will actually be added at the end. Similarly, if you're defining a function that you want to reuse in multiple places, thanks to a bind, with one parameter that varies depending on the context, be sure to put this parameter as the last argument in your input list. Finally, if you want to go even further, note that there are two related functions, bindv and unbind. The bindv function is just like the bind function, except that you pass the extra arguments as an array, which can typically be interesting if the arguments to bind are inside an array variable. The unbind function will remove the n last arguments from the call, depending on the n number that you pass it. So by chaining unbind and bind calls, which will be processed from right to left, by the way, you can add or remove arguments at will, and create a totally custom version of your function. But in any case, there you go. I really hope you liked this quick tip. Don't hesitate to react in the comments, and subscribe to the channel to get more videos. And of course, a huge thanks to my Patreon members for the support, and to you for watching. And as always, take care.